With COVID cases surging here and across the country, we continue to be indebted to those who've been on the front lines, many of them who've been on the front lines now for four months. Once again, we have the privilege of checking in with one of those frontline workers, Nurse Emily Allen, who is at the critical care nurse at Bethesda Hospital's COVID unit. And joining us now is Emily. Emily, how are you this morning? I'm doing well, thanks for asking. All right, let me ask you, you said that the numbers on the critical care ward are actually down even though we've had a surge in numbers statewide. Tell us about that. Yeah, actually, you know, the last few weeks, we've seen lower number of, you know, hospitalized patients period at Bethesda, which is really good news. Um, but with the surge and increase in numbers, always comes the chance of people needing to be on ventilators and needing to be back in the hospital. So, you know, when that does to happen, if does start to happen, if it starts to happen, we are more than ready. In well, that's good to know. And I think the state health officials have said one of the reasons that there are fewer people in the hospital is that there are more young people. And we're talking about right. even teenagers and people in their early mm -hmm. 20s getting COVID. You and I profiled a, 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 young, a man who's 51, Rick Huggins, who was in your hospital at Bethesda for a month. No underlying conditions, 51 years old. And you and I said it before we got started, he almost died. How typical is that? You know, unfortunately, it just depends on the person, you know, but that that story with Rick just really, I hope that it touched a lot of people and really hit home because that's not a made up story. That is a real story. That man is an avid cyclist, very healthy young man. And, you know, like I said before we started, I, I really thought he was not going to make it. I mean, he was so, so sick. And, and 51, I'll, I'll say 51 is young, but in terms of oh, the COVID yeah. patients that are, that are dying yeah. that you see, that, that is relatively young, and, and he, right. he barely made it. We're going to put a link on our website so people can check that story because it, it really is a frightening one. I want to ask you, too, your perspective about being a mom here. You've got, we've got a picture of you and your husband and your three adorable kids, and we also have a picture of Sissy, who's almost yeah. five Right, yeah, almost four, almost four, yep, and she's yep. wearing a mask. A, a lot of people with young kids are struggling. How do you get her to wear a mask, and and what do you tell the kids? So we've had lots of open conversations. I think that's the most important part is to have open conversations with your kids, especially when they're younger. Um, you know, because seeing a person in a mask can be scary. I mean, look at Halloween; people are in sure. masks and scare people. So we just have open conversations and talk about why they wear it. You know, um, Sissy, her name's Lily, but she goes by Sissy. She is by far the most outspoken. So she has the most questions and she asks great ones. You know, we explain it. You could ask her today or tomorrow or whenever, and she'll tell you she wears them to help and protect sick people. And she wears them to protect herself. And well, I just she actually keep it on though. And how, how about your son? Yeah. Yeah. No, they both keep it on. I was very surprised, you know, but that's what I mean. The importance of having the conversations, you know, these people that are wearing masks are good people. They're helping and, they and were they're more helping than, too by, by wearing right, masks. Right. I was going to say they're more than happy to be helping. You know, they understand what a sick person is and they also don't want to get sick themselves. They both don't enjoy going to the doctor. So. All right. <laughs> and how do you do it? Because they're so young in this age group without, scaring them. Have they, have they come to you and said, you know, I'm scared about this. I'm scared about mommy being a nurse and being with right. all these sick people. So what I did was I got masks and let them kind of play with them in the house. I let them feel them. You know, my husband and I wear them. So they got used to Joe and I wearing them before we kind of took them out in, in larger groups or bigger situations so that they actually got a hands on feel. There's also several cartoons and little clips like on kids YouTube and different uh, TV programs that also talk about it as well. Same with washing your hands and social distancing. So I think getting on their level is key, you know? Right. Do I, stuff that they like. Um, going back to Bethesda Hospital, this is the anniversary. Uh, I believe it's 100 days. It is. Which I is remarkable. Uh, so you've been there the whole time and as have, have the staff, we have some pictures of them as well. I mean, what is it like? I mean, there's got to be burnout and stress from this kind of a job. It, it definitely is. You know, there can be in any situation as a critical care nurse. You don't always see the most great, happy situations. But 
being at Bethesda, I remember being there that opening night. I remember the first patient coming in. And I think, and fast forward to, to now, and it's just a roller coaster of emotions, honestly. Now, with the census being kind of lower, we have a lot of us have been able to spend more time with our families and recharge. So that's been awesome. That's been awesome. Well, listen, Emily Allen, always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Be safe, you. stay well, you too, and thank you. Thank you.